Yo comrades, so I actually had a little bit of time this weekend and wheeled out with Michael here. We've been trying to meet with this guy for over a year and a half. He's the son of my co-worker that I know. I, I probably known her the whole time I worked at my company, 15 years. Yeah. So we were very close and I get to corrupt her son now. Yep. And this is his awesome Jeep. Uh, you pretty much built, well, with some exceptions, you built the whole thing. Like you got really technical. He went all mechanical in this thing. Yep. and learned a ton from what I understand. You can actually put a vehicle together now. Yeah, yeah, it taught me a lot. It really did. A lot of breaking things on the trail and uh, learning how to fix them. It's a 1995 Jeep Grand Cherokee. It's got the 5.2 liter V8 motor in it. So I got this Jeep from a guy suffering a bit of a midlife crisis. Uh, he gave it to me at an absolute bargain and went to a nice vacation in Hawaii. And uh, the first time I went out, I ended up uh, breaking everything. So the original bumper came ripping off uh, the front with the winch mounted to it. Uh, my front drive shaft exploded twice in under 100 meters. Um, the rear bumper came off and then had a couple of other problems with the transfer case not uh, staying in uh, four, four low. And that's where uh, my mechanical journey became, uh, or that's where I, when I started my mechanical journey with this vehicle. Thirty-three-inch mud terrain tires from BF Goodrich, uh, sitting on aluminum wheels on a seven-inch uh, rough country lift. On the front, we have the ARB bumper with a synthetic winch line on a Smittybilt 9500 winch. How many pow a thousand pounds on it? Uh, so the Jeep itself is about 4200, and the winch is rated for 95. I'd like to keep the uh, ratio that you know whatever your vehicle is, you want to be able to pull double. Exactly. Well, you you got a good smart uh, uh, regular. Jeep winch, I guess, the, the yep. 9000, yeah. It has saved me many times, many, many times. <laughs> oh, yeah. The winch use, I guess, you don't really use it 95% of the time, but that 5% when you need it? It's a lifesaver. Yep, a life exactly. Saver. Save yeah. me too. With all the water we have here in BC, a snorkel is pretty much a must. Uh, this is just a generic brand snorkel bought online. It's properly sealed with silicon, so it's functional. And uh, I'm one of those people who believes that you don't need to pay for the brand name. So this is, works just as well as any other uh, snorkel. Oh, for sure. You it but properly. you actually have it primarily for water, because usually people actually have snorkels for dirt and stuff, especially traveling in caravans. Um, actually, you know, I don't do that much traveling in caravans, and we've had Jeeps with the same height and no snorkels, and the engines on those died, whereas I kept going. How, what was the deepest you ever took this the guy? The deepest I've ever waited was probably right around here. Oh, so man. Quite deep. Yeah. And obviously when you ride this deep, you don't stop at all. No, the yeah. moment you start stopping, the water starts coming right in. But what's helping you is you don't have a sh a, a tons of electronics like modern car does. So, oh, this thing is bare bones. Exactly, because yeah, I mean, the snorkel wouldn't save you if you no. had a modern car. Nope, it's that good old, you know, AMC V8 yeah. with a, a distributor on it. And, it, it and that's great. the benefit of old rigs like this. Yeah, and of course the Smitty Build sliders, those are welded, not bolted onto the frame. So I find that they stiffen up the chassis a little bit and they come in really, really handy. Uh, especially with all the creek beds and, and uh, rocks that we tend to uh, slide up against. They're phenomenal. Highly recommend these ones. Huh, so yeah, regular use for those, huh? Yep, if you uh, take the mud off, there's going to be lots of scratches and lots of big dents in them. They are phenomenal. Even uh, even another thing is against stumps. When you're on a trail and you, oh, yeah. you light up right up against a nice stump that somebody's yeah. grinded down for you, uh, they're phenomenal for that. That's why I think all my quarter panels are still on the doors where they need to be. <laughs> right. So on the back, I went with a Wilco off-road uh, hitch receiver to carry my tire. Uh, part of it is for money reasons, a lot cheaper that way. And also it saves a lot of weight instead of having a big metal bumper. Uh, all around. Uh, Do you recall which Wilco version it is? Because they have four. Uh, I know it's the one with a higher offset, but that's all I remember. Really. I, th I think this is a classic one. Yeah. 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 Just on the back, anything that anybody should always carry with them when you're off-roading. You got a shovel. You got an axe. Um, usually, I rely on my buddies for their chainsaws. I'm not that advanced. Yeah, I need to get one too, chainsaw. Yeah. Oh, but I want electrical so I can charge it from solar during the yeah, day. That's, yeah, that's a good idea. This is actually interesting how the ladder is mounted. It's mounted right on the back door. Uh, I, I always saw them being mounted to the roof racks over to the bumpers, but it's actually going through. And you said lots of people actually ask you about this. Yep. So it how is. is it done? It is uh, custom made. Basically, it's just tube welding and uh, tube bending. 
So how this bracing works is it goes into the uh, tailgate and then behind there's another brace that connects the whole thing together that's formed to the tailgate. And a lot of you people are wondering whether I get water in there. Well, the cool thing is, is that the seal actually runs underneath all of that. So all of these connections are technically outside right. of the vehicle. So and I if never... you didn't connect the two, it would basically rip out the whole metal yep. piece. Yeah. yeah. So we wanted to make sure that it's properly braced because I do get on there and it is for purpose use. <laughs> yeah. Cool. So I got a Smitty built uh, Defender um, roof rack. And then all the lights are just your classic Amazon uh, Amazon lights. They serve the purpose. They go all the way around the vehicle. Uh, I Same have... as me, right? And if someone unbolts it, yeah, well, it's it's not a big deal. It's not like you lost a rigid light for like a two grand. About <laughs> a month ago, for... somebody came and stole all of my lights, and I just recently reinstalled everything. And this time, I put a little bit of red lo red Loctite on them. So mm. hopefully, no nobody's going to be taking them. Yeah. But it wasn't a big loss. Imagine all of these were rigids. Yep. Good luck. <laughs> I don't want to have uh, more more expensive lights than the Jeep is worth. So, <laughs> And then uh, one of the most uh, nerve-wracking things I had to do was install these louvers. So uh, cutting your hood first time, that's definitely an, uh, a rush. Uh, these engines are known to run really, really hot. So I wanted to give them a little bit more room to uh, escape that heat. These are functional. They're not just for Good. looks. Did you install snorkel yourself? Uh, yes. Yeah. Did they come cut in first or the snorkel? Uh, the snorkel came way before. Okay. So you shouldn't have worried as much. It's, it's a snorkel when people get to the snorkel, that whole chunk cutting, and everyone's yeah. like, oh my god, if I don't do it right, that's it. Yeah, the fan belt on this is mechanical. So unfortunately, when I'm doing some rock crawling and moving quite slow, that heat has a really big uh, problem getting out. I see. Yeah. Yeah, I figured that it's better to be self-sufficient, and I have an ARB onboard air compressor. I tucked it right underneath the back seat. It's a nice placement, yeah. Not yeah, abstracting anything. It works wonderfully. And I end up uh, always inflating my tires and somebody else's for them too. Because people don't want to spend their own money on things. <laughs> yep. <laughs> for the uh, navigation aspect of my build, I just went with a simple TRX. Uh, it's extremely convenient. It's very, very user friendly. Uh, all the maps are automatically updated, so you don't have to go into any files and download anything like that, although you can. And it's basically a giant sharing network. It's like a Facebook for off-roading. You take your track, you can uh, put different points on your map as you're going along and then you get to upload it. And uh, it's a network of other users. I, I bought this one the first year that they came out. I don't know whether they have a newer one. Uh, this one has been working oh, so great so at that time so they only offered just one device, yeah. I see. They have, they have different uh, mounts that come with it and then they have one that has a camera on it as well. This one does not. Are they um, new on the market or... They, they are, as far as I know, I think they came out in 2017 or 2016. Oh, so brand new, okay. Yeah. Uh, also for anybody who does any UTV racing or anything like that or any type of uh, adventuring like that on a motorcycle, these are completely 100% waterproof and shockproof. Nice. So you can run them in the rain uh, and snow or shine, they work great. Cool. They really are awesome. If you're looking to get into off-roading, I mean, uh, Grand Cherokees are the perfect vehicle. They offer a little bit more luxury than uh, your XJs do. They have coil suspension all around. Some of them, like this one, comes with 373 gearing, so you can automatically run 33-inch tires and not have any power problems. And uh, parts are available widely. I mean, anything can be replaced and for extremely low costs. So, very sustainable, let's put it that way. <laughs> right, it's been a great hanging out with you, and actually, finally, year and a half later, put a actual yeah. face to a guy uh thanks for following actually he back in the day you offered to help me editing yes i passed on that offer maybe one day. i just wasn't sure at the time like uh how can someone deal with my crappy crappy footage but it has improved since then so maybe i'm gonna get to a point where i can actually have yeah. help on the side maybe one day and they can not swear at me for doing shitty <laughs> <laughs> okay, cut, cut, cut. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, looking forward to getting out with you again, and uh, thanks for showing me this awesome spot. That's exactly what I was looking for today. You guys gotta go home. You, they didn't come out here for camping, just just to wheel around, have fun. Yeah. Whereas I'm actually gonna camp here, throw some traps right now, try it for crawfishing fishing and uh, editing time. So if people actually wanna follow your shenanigans, and he, this guy is all about shenanigans, uh, what's uh, what social media you run? Uh, you guys can find me on Instagram at mc underscore mookie, M-O-O-K-Y. And it's a lot of random things. A lot of it is my Jeep adventures and the traveling that I do with my girlfriend. But you always find something good on there. But you know what? I actually checked out his photos lately. Well, I've been checking out once in a while. He really improved. Like photography is getting like really nice. The last shot I've seen of this guy somewhere in the water woods. I was like, oh man, this is the kind of pictures you drool over when you, you know, see it out there.
Yeah, I learned from the best, let's put it that way. Following this guy around a lot, so. Sure, whatever, my, photog <laughs> my photography sucks. <laughs> See you next time, it's man. It's a pleasure, it was an absolute pleasure. Hey comrades, don't forget to hit that like button and also leave a comment and if you haven't subscribed yet, you should by hitting that subscription button and also bell notification next to it so you can actually get my video updates both in notification and your video feed and as well you can support this channel if you like my videos through PayPal or Patreon in the links down below or just after this video.